Hello everyone, my name is Don, the movie reviewer, and today we're going to be reviewing a film called The King's Choice. Now, I saw this film because I was watching a previous movie at my local indie movie theater, Sepultura Local Indie Movie Theaters, and um, I, was, I saw the trailer for this, and as I was watching it, I said, this looks like the movie that Dunkirk should have been. Now, was I right or wrong about that? Let's find out. Yes, Majestät. Fremde Kriegsschiffe auf Weih in Utrecht oder Russland führen. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Holen wir mir die Rosinke da! Es ist soweit. Für was? Öl! Det har gjort et vældigt indtryk på mig, at ansvaret for de ulykker, som kommer over land og folk, lægges på mig. Og det er et meget tungt ansvar. Så tungt, at jeg gruer for at bære det. In 1940, during World War II, King of Norway, H.M. Kong, Haakon VII, had his troops fight off a German war machine at the city of Oslo. During this particular time, the King of Norway had to make some difficult decisions. Jasper Christensen, the man that you might know as Mr. White from Casino Royale, the current James Bond Daniel Craig series, plays the King of Norway, H.M. Kong, Hawken VII in this movie. Now, I'm not a history buff, and I don't know anything about any of this stuff. I just was watching this movie because I saw the trailer, and it seemed intriguing. During the opening scene of this movie, we get some subtext as to where we currently are in this timeline that the movie is portraying. And as I was watching it unfold on screen, it felt very compelling to me because not only did this movie show the soldiers that were at the front of this war, but it also showed the people who were behind the scenes who were making decisions as to where this war was going. I really liked the introduction scene to H.M. Kong Hawken VII because it just showed him as a regular individual. There was one scene in here where Jasper Christensen was talking to a particular soldier who I did like in this movie. And as the soldier was admiring the king, saying, we're fighting for you, the king said, no, we're fighting for this country. Karl Markovics in this movie plays a Nazi diplomat. Now, at first, when his character popped up on screen, I said to myself, oh, wow, we're seeing the Nazi side of things. As his character progresses in this movie, just like H.M. Kong Hawk in the seventh is portrayed, he's also portrayed as just a regular guy. I really like scenes like that in the movie because it also shows the character's humanity while they're just following orders. Not everything in war is black and white. There's a gray area in between everything, and you can never really judge someone based off the actions that they make in life. Just like Karl Markovic's character, he's not all black and white. He's got a gray area. There are certain scenes in the movie where I actually felt sympathy for him. Watching the back and forth to see what was going on behind the scenes on the battlefield was very refreshing to me. Because most war movies, and I'm not a real big fan of war movies, just show what happens on the front lines with the soldiers. Now, this is the case with this movie, but we're mostly spending time behind the scenes with the diplomats and the kings and see how all this stuff plays out like they're playing chess. Where one person is panicking, trying to strategize how they're going to have, you know, 
this country sign this, you know, this surrender and then how this king is saying, well, you know, I don't want my country to surrender. We won't surrender and we will never give up. And seeing both of their lives in a personal context was very interesting because it adds a layer of humanity to these characters that I felt was definitely needed because as we're seeing both sides of things, I definitely felt empathy for both of them on the playing field. Jasper Christensen is a fine actor in this movie. He definitely gives a tremendous performance. Um, he really got lost in his character in this movie. Watching him on screen, he get rid of he gets rid of that whole Mr. White persona, and he definitely inherits uh, this king's just presence and his overall structure and everything. Just the way he portrayed the character, I really enjoyed it. Anders Bosmo Christensen is my favorite character in this movie. He plays the son to H.M. Kong Hawkins Seven, And I also believe that this actor is the biological son of Jasper Christensen because they have the same last name. I'm just making a guess. I don't know. But in the movie, them playing father and son, if they are in real life, they definitely play that up in this movie. They have a good dynamic here where the king is always saying, saying to his son that, you know, you're not... The son is very eager. That's what I noticed. The son is very eager. He wants to get out there on the battlefield. He wants our troops to do something while the king is like trying to sit back and strategize and figure things out. I love the dynamic between the two of them. It was excellent. Karl Markovics was great in this movie as well. I liked his character. His portrayal of just a man who says that he wants to create peace between the countries and that he's not really there for a war. I believed him. Like there's a scene when he talks to the king of Norway and he tries to plead with him to sign this contract to surrender. And coming from him, seeing his life fold, you know, seeing his life unfold and everything was very interesting because you see the humanity with him. You see that in the one scene, he says he has a family and you see him with his family. Now, it also, this war causes him to make some really drastic decisions that ultimately change his life in the long run. And we just see the effects of war take a toll on this man. And I definitely enjoyed watching his mental sanity start to decline as the everything escalated in the film. Arthur Hockelotti, plays Manning Frederick Seberg, and he's one of the soldiers that is on the front line. Now, like I said earlier, you know, usually you see a war film and they're always, you know, showing and portraying the soldiers that are on the front line more than anything. And in this case, I thought it was a little iffy because he comes in halfway into the movie and I just said, okay, I know what's going to happen to him. And what I expected did happen because the movie tries to add an element of sympathy for this character in there. And at first, I did feel sympathetic, but then even though I knew what was coming when I first saw him, it just lost some of its impact because he popped in halfway into the movie and we were already set into things. Everything was already in motion. And then his character shows up. He's really, you know, funny. He's like the really nervous guy. And then when his you see the last moments of his character... I just, I felt bad for him, but then at the same time, I didn't because I don't think they really gave him enough character development. My final thoughts with this movie, I think this movie is really well executed. The directing is fantastic. The acting is great in here. The music kind of does feel uh, repetitive because each scene that is supposed to be emotionally engaging, there's always some music being played and it's constantly being played. And it kind of irritated me in the long haul because at first I was like, oh, okay, you know, it's kind of make it sucks you into this environment when the bombs drop and all that stuff is fantastic. But then when they continue to play it, it just kind of got irritating and repetitive and it, and it got annoying to me. But the performances in here definitely drove the story. The music was okay at first, just got repetitive. Seeing the behind the scenes stuff with how, you know, all the diplomats and the kings and everything uh, try to figure out how to win this war and how everything was plotted out. I definitely like seeing the behind the scenes stuff. I would give the King's Choice movie, I would give it a B plus. I would give it a B plus because the music was effective, the directing was effective, the actors were effective in their roles, the story was very engaging and interesting, we had interesting characters here. Um, 
the Jasper Christensen was fantastic in here playing the king. You have uh, this guy, he was fantastic. You also have the son. And all these characters were fleshed out really well. You not only got to see, you know, them playing on the battlefield, but you also got to see the humanity with these characters. And I really enjoyed that. Um, so if you don't mind watching a movie that has subtitles and it's a war movie and it's got great performances, great music that does kind of feel repetitive and a character that does pop in there towards the end that didn't really get enough development. Um, I would say that give this one a shot. This one's not bad. So as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.